And that's the thing. Moses Ingram getting racist messages is a problem, and she shouldn't get them. But you know what's a bigger problem? Assholes like the quartering Ben Shapiro, neurotic and critical drinker, maybe, maybe saying it's bad, but defending it. And I want to point out, Ben Shapiro and the quartering definitely didn't say it's bad. This organized chaos video is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This video is also brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Hey, thought about doing something different uh, this time around. Since I did this whole Obi-Wan Kenobi series and the series ascended, I thought, let's go ahead and do a video where I just talk about my opinions towards the series. Um, I usually reserve this for the uh, podcast, and I'm still going to do a podcast on it, except that time I'm going to be joined by my best friend George and Bobby Quarters, and that'll be on the podcast channel on uh, next Tuesday. So the link is in the description box. But this is going to be like my first impressions, and then in that podcasting, I will have had a chance to watch it again with my family and have a bit more concrete opinions. So, just a couple hours ago, I finished watching Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 6. And I have to say, that was a damn good episode. I... I don't know, I have issues with this series. But overall, I think it was very, very good. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and go over some of my issues. Pretty much all my issues exclusively are... In a lot of shots, I feel like the direction is a bit lackluster. Um, there's lots of things people point out, and they blow it way out of proportion, in my opinion. But there are things where I feel like a bit sharper direction could have made it work a lot better. Um, the big thing lots of people like to point out is like the, the Princess Leia capture scene. It is It looks very wonky, and it actually, I think, would have sold a lot better if they maybe use different shots or cut it slightly differently so it just looks a little bit smoother. As is, it does look very wonky. Um, almost kind of slapsticky, But it's it's not. It's weird. Um, I feel... it's it's But it's a minor quibble. Um, and it's not like she's not captured. She is captured. It's a weird chase and she's captured. The uh, cave in episode 5 has like this like feels like a set. It has this very, like, artificial feel to it, and it doesn't quite work for me. Um, there is uh, a couple things in episode four, which I overall is an episode I like. That's kind of like the one where Obi-Wan gets his groove back, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. But there's two things I noticed in there that, that don't quite sync. The first being um, kind of like this weird slap thing that Tala does to the stormtroopers. She does this weird slap thing uh, where if you actually look, she's like moving their helmets so they can't see. But it doesn't work. It looks really weird because they do this long shot on it, this long one shot on it. And it's something that I think would have worked a lot better if you had some like quick cuts that showed like her actually moving the helmet to make it clear what she's doing. As it is, it just kind of looks like she's doing this like weird slap fight with him. It looks weird. The thing they like to, that people really like to go after it for is the thing with, uh, Obi-Wan putting Leia under his cloak. Which I also think could have been alleviated if they, they limited that by doing uh, just sideways shots of it. So that way it's not as obvious. They did a lot of front shots. And then they did this weird shot where they, they actually show her under the cloak. And it's very like, uh, yeah, we knew she was there. You don't have to do the sh shot to reveal it. That being said, it clearly wasn't a good subterfuge. And they are caught by the stormtroopers soon after. It's not like it, it was a good uh, move. Um, you might be noticing a lot of this seems like quibble stuff, but it's a lot of stuff I've been seeing that I largely agree with. It's, it's weird and it's wonky. Um, it's not, like, like, in my opinion, none of this is stuff that actually destroys the series. I feel like the bigger complaints people levy at this series is stuff that isn't an issue. Like, the stuff with Riva. I'll go ahead and say this. Moses Ingram for the first half of the series, wasn't really selling it to me. Uh, her performance, I felt, was a bit lackluster. 
That being said, by the second half of the series, she actually pretty much sold the character to me. I was on board. The biggest complaint I have about her character is that pretty much her origin story and what's going to happen to her is 100% predictable. Like, they have the thing with the younglings, and then you have this new character that just pops up. Yeah. I figured it out, like, immediately. Oh, she must have been one of the younglings. And guess what? She's one of the younglings. And then she goes after Luke. And then I'm... As she's going after Luke, uh, you have this great fight between Obi-Wan and Vader. And there's, like, no way Obi-Wan can get to uh, Luke in time to save him. But when you think about it, it's like, wait. Is she gonna slaughter Luke just, like... Her friends were slaughtered in front of her? I don't think so. And that's exactly what happens. She has Luke. Uh, he's knocked out in front of her. All she has to do is kill him. And she can't do it because of what happened at the beginning when she was a youngling and what Anakin did to the younglings. And she can't bring herself to be like Anakin. A hundred percent predictable. Um, now, does this mean the character's bad? No, it just means I kind of saw the story coming. Now we got to talk about some of the good stuff. I think this is probably the best portrayal of Vader, considering the time period. This is like half prequel Vader and half uh, original trilogy Vader, where he's he's very menacing like the original trilogy, but he's kind of petulant like the the prequel trilogy, and it, it mixes those together surprisingly well. I think Hayden Christensen, with the little bit of screen time he has, does a fantastic job and he gets his best moment in the duel uh at the end between him and obi-wan um where his helmet gets like shattered and you get to see half his face which is a very creepy image and during that i love this i mean i complained about some of the direction earlier this is a, a this whole fight had beautiful direction and this scene where uh vader's helmet is cracked open and you see hayden christensen's scarred up face under it it's kind of wonderful because you get this the, the the blue and red light over his face while he's talking to Obi-Wan. And he's, he's telling Obi-Wan, you didn't kill Anakin. I killed Anakin. And for all the people screaming about canon, that's like a great moment that actually helps with canon. Because if you remember the beginning of A New Hope, Obi-Wan tells Luke that Darth Vader killed his father. A young Jedi named Darth Vader, who was a pupil of mine until he turned to evil. He betrayed and murdered your father. And then, of course, you know, to explain it away, to retcon it away, they're like, oh, well, you know, that Obi-Wan's Force Ghost says, you know, what I said was correct from a certain point of view. But this, like, helps, like, solidify why he told him that, because that's what Anakin or Darth Vader told him. Darth Vader told him, no, I killed Anakin. You didn't kill Anakin. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. And it's, it's true. Um, what caused Anakin to become Darth Vader was 100% Anakin's choice. Obi-Wan didn't force him down that path. Um... I love that moment. And that whole fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin there, that rematch, uh, everybody was criticizing the, the fight in Episode 3, uh, when in reality, Kathleen Kennedy, when she said this series will have the rematch of the century, it was the Episode 6 fight, which, yeah, it was kind of obvious it would be Episode 6 where they do the rematch of the century. Um, and it was a great fight. Uh, Obi-Wan had already fought Vader and already kind of got his butt kicked. He already got his mojo back and he's ready to fight Ma Vader. And quite frankly, he kicked butt. Um, he was clearly the master in that situation. And the line in episode four everybody's talking about. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. But anyways, after this series, yeah, that's a hundred percent where they leave it off at. Um, God, there's just some really good stuff here. Um, lots of people were complaining about the performances. I thought performances were overall very good. Hayden Christensen's great. Uh, Moses Ingram, like I said, I thought the first half of this series wasn't really working for me. Second half sold me the character. I thought uh, 
They didn't give Joel Egerton that much to do, but what he did have to do, he did a great job. Uh, the child actress who played Leia did a great job. Um, you might notice her name I haven't brought up. It's Ewan McGregor. Because Ewan McGregor didn't do a great job. He did a phenomenal job. He sold this series. Like, holy shit, he was great in this series. I just don't even know how much to describe it. Like, there's that bit in episode, I want to say three, where he kind of fucks up and he calls Leia by her name. And the guards are, like, obviously suspicious at that point. And then he goes, oh... It's her mother's name. And I can't I can't do the line the way he does it. The, the way he sells the, oh, it's you remind me so much of your mother, I get confused. The way he said it, he sells it. And it makes sense why the guards would be like, oh, okay. I get confused. Like I said, it's not been easy. Sometimes when I look at Luma, I see her mother's face. It was a brilliant performance, and he does a great job. He he starts the series kind of broken and fucked up, and by the end, he's got his mojo back. And that's really what this entire series was about. The beginning of this series is Obi-Wan. He had spent his time having to turn his back on everything. Absolutely everything he had ever known. He grew up as a Jedi. Everything he knows is Jedi. Like, if Anakin was too old to learn, that means Obi-Wan was even younger than Anakin when he started learning. Being a Jedi is all he fucking knows, and he had to turn his back on that, and he was broken from it. And from his perspective, the best way to protect Luke and be there for Luke is to not be a Jedi. This series is about him learning he is wrong. The best way to protect Luke is to embrace being a Jedi. Don't go out there and show off that you're a Jedi and get tracked down and killed by hunters. But don't hide from it either. Do good. You are in a unique position to do good. And that's what Obi-Wan learns this series. It's really good. And it's really well done. It's not perfect. It's got its bugs. But overall, I thought this was really good. Um, I guess I should go ahead and go over some... It wasn't that much, but there was some stuff um, that I actually got wrong going over this series and looking at other people's critiques. I was watching this series and assuming Reva would be the main villain, and she's not. She's just a supporting character. She's set up as like a side villain, and then she's kind of a side protagonist, and then she's a side villain again. But she's just a supporting character. The main villain is Darth Vader. And, honestly, I think that's good. Um, so I was wrong. I assumed Reva was the main villain. Nope. But I think it's interesting, because all these reviews I've looked at have largely been wrong about this stuff. Like, they will complain about how it breaks canon, and in the end, the little bit of canon that probably violates, because all stuff placed in the middle of the timeline is going to have little canon violations... Anything that did to break canon, it did, like, more to fix it. Uh, It really does a great job. And I think it's actually well set up for season two if they decide to do it. I think what this season does excellently is that if they decide to do one season and nothing else, perfect. They did a great job this season. It can stand on its own. But they decide to expand it more. Awesome, because this series season also does all the, the major lifting. Obviously, if you do later seasons, you know, you can't have Anakin. You can't have Leia. You could definitely do more with Luke. I think that's why they wanted to do Leia this season, because this is really their best shot to do something with Leia, and then they probably really shouldn't. But they could definitely do more with Luke. They could do more with Qui-Gon, who has a brief cameo at the end of this. Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this series. Not perfect, as I've said, but pretty good. Um, but now I also want to do a brief overview um, of all those videos I've watched. All the, the videos and just s- some reviews and some just terrible takes on this series and what Disney did to with Moses Ingram to essentially have her back. Um, it's very disturbing. 
Um, and these guys were screaming about how Disney was calling all Star Wars fans racist. When Disney, or I, maybe I should say the Star Wars, the official Star Wars Twitter account called all Star Wars fans racist. When it didn't, that was just their narrative. They're talking about Star Wars and Disney pushing a narrative, but they are the ones clearly pushing a narrative. I'm not saying Star Wars and Disney don't have their own narrative. Everybody technically has a narrative. I have a narrative. But these guys clearly are pushing their narrative hard. And they've got a lot of people sold on it, unfortunately. Look at the comments of my videos. You see lots of people are defending them. And it's very disturbing. But Disney and the Star Wars Twitter account did not call all Star Wars fans racist. They simply called out Star Wars fans and asked them not to be racist. And by them coming out and saying that the Disney Star Wars fans are all getting called racist, they are the ones that are calling all Star Wars fans racist. That's the thing to understand. Ben Shapiro, neurotic, uh, critical drinker, Midnight's Edge. Uh, I'm sure I covered more during that time. By pushing that narrative, they are the ones calling Star Wars fans racist. That's what they're doing. That's not what the Star Wars Twitter account did. That's what they are doing. And that's a problem. And that's the thing. Moses Ingram getting racist messages is a problem. And she shouldn't get them. But you know what's a bigger problem? Assholes like the quartering Ben Shapiro, neurotic and critical drinker, maybe, maybe saying it's bad, but defending it. And I want to point out, Ben Shapiro and the quartering definitely didn't say it's bad. Quartering actually even said the messages weren't even fucking racist. But Ben Shapiro and Quartering definitely didn't say the messages were even bad. At least Neurotic and Critical Drinker had the common decency to look at those messages and say, yeah, that was fucking bad. They still fucking defended them, though. They still followed the line about, oh, Disney does some racism in China. Which is something we didn't even fucking talk about when it first came out. But we're going to talk about it now because it fits our fucking narrative. Something we clearly don't give a flying fuck about, but we're going to bring it up now. To distract from the fact that Disney didn't call all fans racist, Disney called out racist within the community. And we're offended at that because those racists are either us or our fan community. And I'm sorry, if you want to court racist into your community, go fuck yourself. I don't want you part of this community. Fucking racists get out. <laughs> but that's the problem with them. They are happy to have racists in their viewership. In their community. Something I'm not happy with. Something Disney Star Wars isn't happy with. And good on them. I'm not thrilled with Disney. Disney's an evil corporation. We've been over it many times. But you know what? Good on them for calling out racists. Good on them to say, hey, you know that racist stuff? Don't do that. Fucking milk toast message as fuck. And these guys are offended by it because... They want to be racist or they want to court racist. It's one of the two. And it's unacceptable, which is why I feel it's important to call out these fuckers. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs>